software as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, bunch of words that are kind of similar, but also completely different. And it might be a bit confusing. And that's what this video is going to help you with. By the end of this, you should have a good idea of the difference between these three and when you should use which. And to make it very concrete, I'm going to give you a bunch of examples. And this is all part of my much larger backend engineering mind map, which has unlimited information. So if you want to get this, I'll have a link to that down in the description and I'll be releasing a video describing everything in this mind map coming up soon. So be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that. So let's first talk about software as a service or you'll often just hear it as SaaS. The easiest way to think about this is just a subscription software. Anytime you're paying for some software and you have to continually pay for the rest of your entire life, wow, there you go, you have a SaaS. It's pretty common to hear software developers talk about some new SaaS that they are working on. Basically, they're trying to solve some problem and charge money in a subscription manner for people to use their software. Now, there are a lot of pros and cons to having things as a service, a subscription model. One of the big benefits is that it doesn't cost a lot up front, so you can start using some new software without investing a lot of money. Now, the downside, obviously, is you'll have to continually pay for it as long as you use it. I think SaaS is pretty much the default for software going forward. Pretty much all of the major software systems are moving to a SaaS version. So we have Adobe products where you pay monthly, Microsoft 365, pretty much every software now is going to a subscription model. From a development perspective, it can also be very nice because it helps you keep software up to date. With a subscription purchase, usually the customer will just always get the latest version of the software. Now you only have to worry about supporting users on the latest versions instead of having to support versions from 10 years ago that people are still using. Now let's talk about platform as a service. Now I don't usually hear people call this pass like I hear SaaS, but you might hear that in passing. I'll probably just call it platform as a service. And this is just a service that will allow you to build your own software as a service. These are largely going to be hosting providers, giving you the foundation, the technology that you can build apps on top of. Now you could probably debate whether or not certain things are considered a platform as a service, depending on how technical you wanna get. But I tend to think of the platform as a service category as things like Vercel, Netlify, and then convenient wrappers on major cloud platforms such as Elastic Beanstalk. So here are some of the other platforms as a service. You may argue that some of these hosting providers are also platforms as a service because you could potentially create applications on top of them. And it's not very easy to just completely categorize an entire company, but in general, these and this list will provide you simplified hosting so you can launch a WordPress or launch some website. And you can often even upgrade to a virtual private server or a dedicated server. But in that scenario, you're often responsible for doing a lot of the management and setup of different things. Whereas when you are using these platforms, it's usually the case that they're going to have a lot of that stuff set up for you and all you have to do is deploy your code. This is why things like Vercel have taken off. It gives developers a very easy way to take their code and deploy it without having to worry about the entire infrastructure. Often, these are wrappers around different infrastructure. So when you're using a service like Vercel or Netlify, most likely they're using AWS or some other cloud provider behind the scenes. And the thing that you're paying for when you use these services is the support and the convenience making this process a whole lot easier. This is especially true if you are a front end developer and you don't have extensive knowledge on the back end infrastructure. You can use a service and they're going to do all of the important stuff for you allowing you to deploy that backend without worrying about the details. The next question though is, what about these ones down here which are associated with major cloud providers? For example, we have AWS Elastic Beanstalk, but if you're familiar with AWS, you might know that they provide a bunch of different services. So why would you go with Elastic Beanstalk instead of EC2 directly? Same idea, Elastic Beanstalk is going to make that deployment process a whole lot easier. So I talked about platform as a service, now let's move into infrastructure as a service. And at this point, you might be getting the idea. We're going one level closer to the hardware and we're going to work with the different services directly. So here are some examples of infrastructure as a service companies. So we have Amazon Web Services as we've been talking about. 
If you go onto AWS and start using servers on your own, you are utilizing infrastructure as a service. You're just paying for those servers so you don't have to have them locally in your garage trying to run a web server from them. This can be great for full control, but there's some downsides too. Now you're going to have to understand web servers. So not only are you going to need to understand all the underlying components, but you might have to install something like Nginx, learn how to run the appropriate backend framework on that web server, and do a lot of additional work to tie things up nicely. You may get a very similar experience with a dedicated server from some of these hosting providers. They give you a computer and then they say, hey, have fun you're responsible for setting everything up. And because of that, some of these could also be considered an infrastructure as a service. You're paying for infrastructure, which you can then build on top of. Platforms like Vercel will integrate very nicely with GitHub. And while you can do all of that same stuff inside of AWS, you might have to do a couple of extra steps and learn all of the technical jargon that AWS provides. It's gonna be pretty similar with other major cloud providers. So whichever ecosystem you're in, whether it's AWS, Google, or Azure, or some of these other cloud providers, there's probably going to be a service for every individual need. So here are some examples of those services. You have monitoring, databases, storage, compute, serverless functions, and the list goes on and on. And when you join something like AWS, the first thought you might have is, wow, this is overwhelming. Basically, you now have to be aware of a ton of different services instead of just going for a platform as a service, which takes care of all of that for you. Which one should you do? That is a very good question, and that really depends on your goals. If somebody is trying to get an app deployed, they have a nice front end and they just need to support that with a nice back end, then using a platform like Vercel is great. If on the other hand, you want to learn the ins and outs and you want to be a very well back end engineer, understanding all of the different components and resources that are being used, then I would recommend you go the infrastructure route. As you get into specific use cases, you might need to do certain things that the platforms as a service do not provide, or maybe they don't have the best support or cost structure, so you might go down to the infrastructure layer to have full control. This is probably not going to be an issue for small apps you're building on your own or in a small team, but as you grow to larger apps, maybe enterprise apps, or if you have a microservice architecture, you're probably going to need control of all of these individual microservices. That's why I often encourage people, yeah, it's a learning curve, but just push through it and learn an infrastructure as a service. I generally recommend AWS, but there's nothing wrong with Google Cloud or Azure. Now, if you've been trying to learn all of the components of software engineering and you feel lost, or overwhelmed, or maybe you just need a bit of guidance and accountability, I recently launched a one-on-one -on -one mentorship program. This is a program where I guide you through the skills you need to develop to be a successful engineer. Regardless of your current skill level, I will meet you where you are and help you learn all of the components you need to be a successful software engineer. That can take some crazy overwhelming mind map like this and give you a very structured path of exactly what you need to focus on to be valuable in your career. So that's skill development as well as career development and one-on-one -on -one mentorship and accountability. If that sounds like what you need, I will have a link to the mentorship application as well. Hopefully this was a great intro to software as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service. Let me know what other backend topics you'd be interested in learning more about. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.